Welcome back to Ben's Garage. We are in the kitchen, the Hobbit's Lair. Hobbit is over here, canning some chickpeas. Now I did mention in the previous solar stat video about our electric heating. Um, we have trialled our electric heating and it was a disaster. It wasn't quite a disaster, but for us it was. <laughs> we got these I showed you in the video when we're experiment with the electric heating, we've got the panel in the bathroom, we've got a little greenhouse heater in the bathroom, 45 watts, now that kicks out some heat. Um, egrets. Um, we had the upright Trotec things which swivel, two of those, and we've got the infrared panel in the office. Now, when they're all switched on with the Trotex just ticking over on 200 watts or 400 watts, the one on the, in the office is on. We're pulling about 1.2 to 1.5 kilowatts of electric. That drains our batteries in six to seven hours. So then what happens? We charge from the grid. So November, we've imported a lot of electric just for charging the batteries up, basically. When it, go, when it switches to charge, it charges the batteries up, but the grid powers the whole house at the same time. So, once your batteries are charged up, it all then switches back to your batteries and your solar. We did try a couple of settings where we sort of left the batteries charging on solar only, so that when um, the batteries drained right down and there was no sun, the power switches to grid, so everything is powered off the grid until the solar can charge your batteries back up again. And it just wasn't working. Um, we've not got the storage capacity to power the electric heating for long enough basically. So what we was having to do was get in the, the Caligas heater through, you know, just one of them things on wheels, you put a Caligas bottle in the back of it. Those bottles are now 45 euros a time. We use them on the cookers, so the Hobbit's range cooker has got a gas hob. My hob over on the island is gas. They've got a bottle each. On those, they last quite a long time. In that gas heater, how many? It was 167 hours on one bar. If you run it on one bar, it's 167 hours. That halves as you go to two bars. You know, two bars, it halves that, and then three bars, it's, you know, gone within a couple of days. But um, it just wasn't, it, you could be sat there with the heat on you and it would keep you warm, but the house was still cold. And this house, I don't know if France have actually caught on yet, but they don't believe in damp course in their houses, whether these new builds are damp course. This house is built on dirt. Underneath the floorboards is dirt. There's a crawl space. The Hobbit has been under our bedroom floor and put some insulation up under the floorboards. She's been up in the loft, in the front and out the back, that's all insulated. There's nothing under the floors. There's nothing in the walls. There's obviously vents in the walls, so you get a draft coming in under the floor. She feels the draft, I don't, but. And the house gets damp. Uh, it doesn't help, obviously, when the roof was leaking, the house gets damp, but Dad's fixed that now. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> um, the house has still got to dry out because obviously it was been leaking for quite a while now that's it's got to dry these electric heaters just don't do it so it was a bit of a conundrum what do we do do we spend a hundred euros a month plus on electric and 40, 45 to 50 euros a cut every couple of weeks for a gas bottle or do we bite the bullet and get some oil in the tank uh, bloody hell so what we, we, we knew we had a couple of hundred litres of oil in the tank, so we fired up the, the central heating system. Boiler fired up perfect first time. Um, and we ran it for a couple of days, and then we ordered some oil. 500 litres of oil, 874, 874 pa uh, euros. <laughs> We've bankrupted ourselves, basically. Uh, but... The radiator, radiant heating, whatever you want to call it, 
it heats the house. It, it warms the walls and it warms and it starts drying the house out and it's it's a good house. I know I'm sat here in a t-shirt at the minute. The heating's not on. The Hobbit isn't because she's obviously suffering a bit at the moment. One more chemo to go and but yeah, she's uh, got a few side effects this time. Being cold this morning. Yeah, being cold. We're keeping her well fed, so she's all right. <laughs> but yeah. Um, the sun's blaring through the window at the minute, so I, I feel it, it's quite warm. I, I don't feel the cold as much as there anyway. But it wasn't so much that, it was the, the dampness in the house, you could feel it. Um, if you've got a new build or a modern built house, I think they say sort of anywhere sort of late 80s onwards, in the UK that is, that's got good insulation and all that kind of thing. I say I'm not sure about the French if they even do damp coursing in they probably do now, but they're a bit slow to catch on. This house there's nothing. It's just rocks built on dirt. Dirt underneath the floors. When the ground gets sort of damp, it sort of comes up in in the house. Um it's not ideal. But those electric heaters just weren't cutting it and they were getting quite expensive. If we had a hell of a lot more storage capacity on the solar system as in three times the amount we've got now we could have had more he electric heating on in the house and it, it might have done it but because we had only had it in select rooms it just wasn't cutting the mustard basically so uh, our little experiment into electric heating was a bit of a disaster but for the winter months it's going to be no good when you get sort of like march onwards because we it's still cold up till may or it can be so march april may according to our solar stats for last year we had good amount of sun coming in so you can run the solar uh, the electric heating during the day and get some warmth into the house um, so those sort of months it will be ideal. We've still not got the storage to keep them running overnight but we don't run the electric overnight, we sort of switch it off at about... Well, a couple of them we had running at 200 watts overnight so that's sort of pulling 400 watts on its own. Then you've got your, all your standby and stuff, your phantom loads, that can be up to 300 watts so that's nearly a kilowatt overnight. Uh, so we've only got 6.4 usable on the batteries so it just wasn't enough so as our solar system expands with more batteries more panels a second inverter it might be an option later on but for now we've just had to bite the bullet get 500 litres of oil hope that that sees us through the coldest of the winter and then um, we've got plans for next year which to some people it might sound like a backwards step <laughs> What? Do that again. Oh no! <laughs> what it won't the last house. <laughs> um, yeah, it might sound like a backward step to a lot of people, but we've got woods. We've got a lot of trees. We've got a lot of wood that we've pulled out of the woods that's all dry, ready for burning. So that the plan is either a log burning boiler out in the boiler room. Or what the Hobbit really wants is a log burning range in the kitchen that will do the central heating. Um, yeah. I will get my range, wood burning range, one way or another. So you've heard it from her. So that will possibly be coming off next year. Hopefully we can get that done through the summer so it's ready for next winter. Um, it, it was electric heating's not working for this house in the coldest months we're not getting the sun in uh, the you know the, the solar especially for november the solar was having a job to get the batteries up to 100 percent it really was and we was having to sort of be a bit selective about putting the water heater on um if we if the water heater gets up to temperature that will last for two to three days still quite warm after that it gets quite cold but we were sort of struggling in november so we was importing a lot from the grid but uh since we've fired up the oil central heating um, it's reduced our electric consumption by quite a bit so you know the battery's sort of getting up 
80-90% during the day and it's almost lasting through the night. It last couple of days has been a bit cloudy so it has charged up off the grid. Um, but when the forecast looks good we have it normally set to Depends on our, if we know we've got a big load the next day, we'll charge it up to the, off the grid up to 95%. If we know that we've not got a lot going on the next day, we'll charge only we'll set it to 50%. So it's like if it charges up to 95% overnight, by the morning it's sort of about 70 odd percent, possibly 80. The sun comes up, and we're sort of pulling in 1200, 1500 watts by half past nine, and then. Once your batteries get right up, then we flick the old water heater on. So we'll keep our fingers crossed for a bit of sunny weather. So that's our electric heating saga. Um, it's not worked for us, but it might work for you. Over and out. And I'll get my own way in the end. You heard this, get her own way, having a laugh. <laughs> Catch your next video. Bye for now.